Welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night cigar show. I'm Art, and to my right is Rob. How you doing, everybody? To his right is Paul. Hello. And to his right is Scott. Evening, everybody. And to his right is the lovely Miss Tia. Hi, everybody. Now, tonight we're joined by Caroline and Teresa, who will be presenting us our cigar and cutting them as well. Yummy. Very Ladies? Nice. Cigar. nice. Very nice. Okay. It might be worth cut. mentioning Wait, that these lovely cigar I girls are going to be at our stores. At various times. Various times right. at various stores sorry. to visit, to clip your cigar light. if yes. you want. Right there. Yep. There's an extra cigar. And there. since we're a full-service cigar store, we'll even smoke the cigar for you if you'd like. Thank you. That was supposed to be funny, guys. It was, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it wasn't bad. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And I like to, I'm using a soft flame. Uh, there are a couple different ways to light your cigar. A soft flame, oh, thank you very a match, much. a torch lighter. Um, I prefer this, so I'm usually lighting a cigar inside so I don't have to deal with the wind. So it's much easier. And I like to toast the cigar for a little bit. Get the embers going all the way around, and then enjoy. Uh, Rob, who was kind enough to lend me his uh, lighter, who, if you probably noticed, owns stock in the uh, butane company. His flame is about three <laughs> feet high. But enough of that, and I think uh, Miss Tia should tell us about our first cigar. Our first cigar is the Juan Lopez. It's a Nicaraguan Puro, because the wrapper, binder, and filler are all Nicaraguan. The sizes are a Selection number one, which is a 5 by 54, the number two, which is 6 by 54, and the number three, which is my favorite, the 6 by 60. The taste profile on this is an aromatic, sweet, woodsy undertones with hints of mocha and nutmeg. So what's the topic today? Well, our uh, topic today is uh, Typically our most embarrassing today. cigar moment. Yeah, that's, go ahead. On our radio show, you just happen to be absent for that show. And I think everyone should hear what your most embarrassing cigar moment is. Because it is pretty funny. What, the one in the car? Yeah, yeah the one in the car. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, not everybody make an ash out of themselves all, all right. at once. So, okay. I've got a cigar in my mouth. I'm walking from my house out to my car. I look and I see there's a car right behind me. So I get in and I must have seen something shiny is what I do all the time. <laughs> so I'm you know, in, there, in the car, I start it up, go back, you know, put it in reverse. Sorry, put it in reverse. And I hit the car parked behind me. And I, ah, the cigar, you know, flies out of my mouth and I'm, it's dark out, I'm trying to find it. And I grab the cigar and I put it in my mouth this way. <laughs> and I, I, I burned my lip, and then of course I was on my way here. This is, actually, this is before Colmar was in existence, I think. And I was on my way here, and I had like a, a the whole night I had just an ice on my lip. And Rob has never let me live no, it down. No, you'll never live it down. Never. As you will never let me live down mine. Oh, let's hear yours. Oh. Mine is, we were all sitting around. Did um, it involve being in the toilet? It was not. Okay. <laughs> uh, we were sitting around uh, just smoking, having a good time, and I just, there was a bunch of cigars laying in an ashtray uh, on the edge, and I had no idea which cigar was mine, so I just picked up any cigar and put it in my mouth, and it just happened to be the wrong cigar. Knowing you, I find that hard to believe, because yeah. I know how you are with uh, sanitation. That's correct. Um, you know, you know, it was the most disgusting thing ever. We have somebody in one of our stores that does that all the time, and guys go crazy. He just randomly picks up. He doesn't do it on purpose. He's just he's just kind of an airhead. Because you don't know where his mouth has been. Yeah, it was just the. Actually, well, worse you do know where his. Yeah, I'm afraid of where it's actually been. So it happens all the time. Well, I am also a victim of the horrible <laughs> cigar in the wrong direction. Uh. It's, it's it's amazing that after a few glasses of wine or a few <laughs> shots of scotch. You can be smoking your cigar happily, and without even thinking about it, it just goes right in your mouth backwards. Uh. And the ashes taste disgusting, and it burns your tongue. Yeah, terrible and the, the ashes. And the worst thing about it is no matter what you smoke the rest of that uh, day, ashes. it's going to taste Dying. like uh, the wrong uh, end of yeah, the cigar. So it wasn't a very complex smoke, I guess. No, it uh. was one-dimensional. One-dimensional. Yeah. Yeah. And it was hot. It burned hot. Yes. Yeah. Very. Oh, um, I don't really have one because I'm perfect now. 
And I modest, just had too, to I might add. Really I had to say that. Really? I had to say that just for you, Rob. Uh. No, I do have one. Um, I was at this club, really cool club. And this guy, you could smoke in there, so that was pretty cool. And this guy was, I'm talking to my girlfriend, and this guy just walks up to me, like, too close. So I said, oh, you want to be too close, huh? So I took my cigar, and I, you know, turned it this way, and I kind of, you know, burned the heck out of his shirt, and he's just standing there. <laughs> and the next thing you know, he walks away, and it's a huge hole. And everyone's like, where did that come from? Who's smoking a cigar? And I'm like, ah, time to put it out. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So that's embarrassing. Yeah. Hey, that's how you get guys away from you. Well, I I, uh, I, have, I have an embarrassing <laughs> story that's somewhat along the lines. I don't know, not really embarrassing, but the way it was handled was kind of along the lines of Scott's. Uh, a buddy and I, in the late 90s, on a nice late spring, early summer day, were heading down to my shore house. And at the time, I had a uh, convertible car. And I won't say which brand, but it was a nice one. And less than a mile from my home, they always say accidents happen less than a mile. I pull down the road, I make a right turn onto a major road, and then I'm waiting to make a left turn on the next road up, and I see in my rear view a car coming barreling down at me. And both of us had very well-aged cigars in our mouth and were enjoying them. This woman, an elderly woman, plows into me, my cigar went flying out into the gully. His cigar went in the boot in the back and burned a hole in it. And uh, fortunately, we were okay. I had a little cut on my forehead, and my uh, my car was stood like almost thirty thousand dollars worth of damage. And I still could, I could still drive it, but we lost two great cigars. And, and the embarrassing point was, I got out of the car and I started thinking about old phone numbers to make sure my head was still on fairly straight. And I was looking around in the gutter trying to find my cigar. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't care about the car. You didn't look at the car at all. No, I wasn't you worried about the car. car. I was worried about the old lady. And everybody, <laughs> oh, this, good point. This poor woman's old, her old Oldsmobile was smashed. <laughs> Luckily, no one was in the passenger seat and they would have been killed. Wow. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking around in the gully trying to find my cigar. I found the cigar. It was still actually burning. The problem was, this is I think of you when I think it is. Thanks. Part of the cigar was in the, in the wet muck uh, uh, but i was tempted <laughs> it must it have been a hell of a cigar uh, it was a really yes, good smoking. cigar you could just cut the end off or something yeah i didn't have a cutter there uh, no. uh, so you said forget about it yeah i said forget about it well, so. it's funny we we do a, an event uh, in in lansdale um they have a big beer fest and we, we have we saw the eduardo's there and a couple of our Eduardos have the the foot uh, the foot band on them. Right. I can't tell you how many people are just standing there. They're walking away, lighting at the foot band song. I'm like, ah, ah, it imparts I a different taste than the It cigar. sure does. That's funny. That's you you crazy. you have to ferment the the foot band first. Yeah. And then it'll taste okay. Double or triple ferment. Triple, triple is a triple. good idea. <laughs> Why well, do I, I, do we want to hear a uh, an embarrassing I, story from our mystery smoker? Oh, yeah, that's a good we have idea. A, we have another mystery smoker yeah. here. Okay, mystery smoker, let's hear your. I can't see you. I can yeah. hear you. I think. Well, but why don't you tell us about your embarrassing moment? Well, my most embarrassing moment happened while I was a guest on your radio show, <laughs> and I I tried to tell a joke. Oh, <laughs> oh you'll never live that yeah, down. That was embarrassing. That was very <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Even though it did involve directly a cigar, it was a cigar-related embarrassing moment. Yes, Do you want to try to tell us that joke now? Uh, uh, negative, it goes yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that, was a, that, that was a big no. I, I, yeah. I think it's one of those moments where you quit while you're still behind. Correct. Yeah. You can find that joke on our website. Yes. Uh, and our website is... cccigars.com. That's double C, cigars.com. Very okay. well. Well, I think, it's time awesome. for, uh, I think it's time for another installment of now Paul's in the Factory. So, Paul, take it away. Paul's in the Factory. Well, when last we met, we had bunched our tobacco, and we were ready to put a binder on it. And, Scott, you had asked about what a binder is. And, mm -hmm. once again, it's, a, it's the leaf that's designed or intended to hold all the filler tobacco together and control the rate at which it burns. So once the cigars have been bunched and bound, I guess bound, you would yeah. say, bound, yeah. then it's time to put the cigar in a mold. And a lot of people don't realize that cigars go into a mold. 
but it's a very important part of the manufacturing process. For the sake of information. Oh, you brought props. I ah. brought a prop. Wow. This is a traditional, simple cigar mold. It's made out of wood. It's a very hard wood so that the oils of the tobacco don't stick to the inside of the mold. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the cigar would come apart when you tried to take it out. Right. But as, as you can possibly see, the mold gives the cigar its, its precise shape. So they, what they do is they lay the bunched, bound cigar into that. You can put it down. And then the other side clamps onto it. And as the roller is working, they stack up a whole bunch of these, which then go into a press. In the old days, it was with a big wheel on top, and you'd crank the wheel, and it would just press this down. And you would leave it in there for about an hour. And after an hour, you'd open it up and rotate the cigar. Yeah. And the reason you do that is so that the edges of the mold don't create a little shape right. on the cigar that you don't want. There. Indentation. These molds more recently have been produced in plastic. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, if you're a big company and you're using a lot of molds, plastic is a good way to go. Yeah. They well, make the, those uh, molds uh, in, in Pennsylvania, right, right yeah. in Lancaster, right outside we, Lancaster. We used to use them, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what else is interesting is um, I read something that uh, Carlos Fuente actually said that one of the biggest contributing factors to the cigar boom in the 90s was the, the, the fact that they could start making them out of plastic and because yeah. there was a huge demand and they just didn't have any molds. Right. And I think he met with somebody in, in Lancaster and yeah. they developed it. Yeah. yeah. Does that ever like deteriorate or...? The wooden ones yeah. do over time. The plastic ones will basically last forever. Okay. Uh, of course, the real traditionalists would never touch a plastic mold because <laughs> yeah. it's plastic. Mm -hmm. Then again, the real, real traditionalists don't use this kind of mold at all. The oldest method mm -hmm. for making a cigar hold its shape is actually this. This is a cigar just wrapped up in a sheet of newspaper. And what they would do with it is twist the ends very tight, as tight as they possibly could, and then wet it down, and then put it aside. They wet the whole the whole, the whole thing, thing. Yeah, with water or just with water, yeah. just a little bit, just enough to, to hit the paper. Yeah. You're not you're not trying to soak the cigar. It's right. just the paper. As it dries over the course of about a day the paper contracts mm -hmm. and it right. gets tighter and tighter so the paper acts as a mold. It actually gives the cigar its shape. I think I saw that in the uh, Cheech and Chong movie. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's a, different you, that's a whole thing. Yeah, uh, I don't think there was tobacco it's, in it. It was about the right size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what was the story about that? They used a pound of kitty litter to make it menthol? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. okay. I wouldn't know about that. For my time. Anyway, so the cigars go into the mold, and they sit in the mold for an hour, they get rotated, they sit in the mold for another hour, and everybody has their own approach to how long it stays in the mold. Once the molding is done, the pile of molds come back to the roller's table, and it's almost time to finish the cigar. But in a lot of factories, it's not quite time to finish the cigar. There's a very important step that comes next, this is the point at which, in an old school factory, a supervisor would lean over the roller's shoulder, take a bunch out of the mold, squeeze it, feel it, make sure that there aren't soft spots or hard spots. They might take one out of 50 or so and smoke it just to make sure that it draws right, and that, it, that it functions the way it's supposed to. In a more modern factory, yeah, what they do is they use a machine. And it's called a draw master. And the draw master is basically just a metal tube with a suction pump and a gauge and a foot pedal, because they actually use their feet to turn it on. And what they do is they take, most factories will take a random sampling of cigars out of different molds and just stick it in the tube, step on the pedal, and it sucks air through the cigar and it measures on the gauge how much suction is necessary to pull air through. Wow. 
So if it takes too much, that's no good. And if it takes too little, that's no good either. So what did they do with those cigars? Well, every factory does something different. The really big factories toss those cigars aside and put a different name on it and sell it for cheap. <laughs> okay. Really? Well, we don't want those. <laughs> oh, we, yeah. we don't sell those either. Not really. Um, interestingly, some factories use the draw master on every single cigar yeah, they I make. Think, Rocky I think, Patel does that. I think CAO said they do that too. Yeah. Uh, CAO does, Rocky Patel does, uh, Nestor Placencia does. Um, we, we, we played an interesting game in our factory. What we did when we finally got a draw master, because it's, it's a small factory, uh, but when we got a draw master, we put it at the front of the rolling room, and each roller, when it was time for him to open up some, some uh, molds and take out the bunches, had to go to the front of the room and measure every cigar in front of all the other rollers. Wow. And they got tremendous grief from the other rollers if too many of their cigars were too high or so too low. Them into rolling good cigars? Well, that's exactly right. What we found was the reject percentage dropped like a rock once they were in front of all the other rollers ah, and, and had pressure. to do it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, peer, peer pressure, pressure works. Yeah. So that's the molding. Um, and of course, there are different molds for each shape of cigar. Not just size, different shapes, and it might be worth talking about the different shapes of cigars briefly. Briefly, yeah, briefly. We there, won't forever. That the, was enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> there, there are basically three types of cigar shapes. There are what they call parejos. A parejo is a straight cigar that has a rounded head, like this, and that's it. It's straightforward. There's no taper to the cigar. The second cat and, and those come in lots of sizes. Right. The second category is what they call figurados, and that just means a shaped okay. yeah. cigar. Uh, generally, it refers to a torpedo or a bellicoso or, or a pyramid, which are the pointy cigars. Or it can refer to uh, the very traditional perfecto, which is a cigar that's slightly pointed on both oh, ends. Man, yep. And of course, the third category is the Salomon, which is a, generally a very large cigar. It's tapered at one end and has a little nipple at right. the other end. Mm -hmm. What about box press? Well, box, yeah. box well, press could yeah. theoretically apply hmm. to any shaped cigar. There are box press figurados, there are box press torpedoes, there are box press straight. Box press has a very interesting history. A uh, hundred years ago or more, cigars that were box pressed were generally viewed to be cigars that were of an inferior yeah, quality. Cigars, yeah. And the reason that they that's would changed. box, yeah, that's changed a lot. The reason they were box pressed in the first place was if they were rolled by less experienced rollers, even the molding wouldn't firm up the cigar enough to hide soft spots, mm. voids in the bunch. So they would put it in a very tight box. They'd squeeze the cigars in and age them in that so that when, they, when you took the cigar out, you couldn't tell where the soft spots and voids were. So it was a way of hiding a cheaper cigar. Gotcha. During the cigar boom in the 90s, box pressing came back as a curiosity, and people sort of got they into like, it yeah. and decided to like it. And now box press cigars tend to be a little more expensive. In fact, Box pressed has become popular enough that some of the companies yeah. actually get square molds. Man. I was and wondering they, about that. They don't actually box press them; they just mold them s square. I've to begin with. to ask about that. Well, I'm, it's never quite yeah. sure. Alec Bradley used to have one that was a triangle. Yes, they did the trilogy. The, the trilogy, yeah. I think uh, that was very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope our viewers are following each segment and learning a lot about the art of the cigar. Remember, it's cigar cigars. Cigars are the stars. But I think uh, next topic should be sports figures who smoke cigars. Pete Rose. Pete Rose. He Did he? Does, yeah. I don't he remember. Does. And he was on that, um, he had a new reality show with the Asian girl who was white and he had the two kids and they never paid attention to him. And he always had a cigar in his mouth. Really? I did not know that. I didn't either. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at you. Got you, oh, you, 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 you again. Thank you. 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 Th
Um, I think Michael Jordan is probably one of the yeah. most popular. Uh, yeah. My athlete. favorite. Yeah, yeah, no, just, I think he's one of the most popular ones who smokes the most. Bernie Perrant. Bernie Perrant. Yeah, I know Bernie He has cigars. his own cigar line, well, too, with Rocky yeah, Patel. Very much. That was good. There was, actually, there was a lot of them. Thank you, Carolyn. Did you guys, do you remember in the newspaper, they had, a, after the Phillies won the World Series in, in 08, they had a, a picture of Ryan Howard. I think yeah. it was a Romeo and Juliet, the, right, yeah. there, right on the front page. We, had, yeah. actually, we actually had it framed in the store for a while. Well, again, uh, being, throw it out. being old school and older than all of you, not put together, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite is the Babe. Yeah, big cigar smoker. Babe Ruth. Well, he was a big everything. He was a big everything. Yeah, who, yeah. how can you have a hit? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Probably oh, did. Like I wouldn't doubt it. I yeah. wouldn't either. He's walking up, he'd throw it out or something. I, 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 I wouldn't doubt he, he had the power to do that back then, so I wouldn't be shocked we, if that if, was the case. If Uncle Max was here, we could have asked him. Yeah. 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 I think the mystery smoker has. Ah, <laughs> our mystery smoker is going to chime in too. Yes. I like boxing. It's Rocky Graciano. Well, Rocky smoked cigars, oh, yeah. yeah. Taking it back to the yes, that's Jerry true. Cooney was a big cigar smoker also. Who was a big cigar? Jerry Cooney. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, he wasn't much of a fighter. Oh, yeah, well, he had some <laughs> going. He had good days. Yeah, you should have focused more on boxing. Yeah. He had a glass jaw. <laughs> yeah. A any other? Yeah. Ask? Any I other? have a sports and cigar trivia question, and I don't actually know the answer to this, so I'm hoping one of you does. Well, we'll right. try. The bo speaking of boxers, the boxer Hector Camacho. Yeah. Yep. Is the Camacho cigar named for him? No, I don't think I so. Don't I doubt so, it. No. I okay. doubt it. Well, this Christian. People, people yeah. have asked me that, and I never quite knew the answer. I don't think it is. I don't think so. Actually, I think that was Sal Fontana. Sal Fontana named Camacho. I think so. It? Yeah. It was, it was his company originally. Interesting bit of trivia: His son lives in Yardley. Who's son? South Fontana? Yeah. yeah. I know he had relatives up yeah. here. Yeah. I yeah. was not aware it's of that. A very, it's a very famous neighborhood. We've got oh. Paul Bush, Fontana's son, Scott Atkinson. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is. It's, who, it's, who was that last one? I don't remember. Really yeah, really. yeah. I got a really good one. You know Baldy? Since they're all in the Philadelphia area, sadly, he's no longer with us anymore. Harry the K. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thanks oh, so much, man. Man. I used to love listening to him uh, do a game, and in the background, you can hear him. Yeah, light, light, yeah, cigar. lighting the cigar. Yeah, that's great. Hmm. Was he a sportscaster? Right. He was. Yeah. A, he was a very famous oh, Phillies broadcaster. Hall of Fame. Yeah, Hall of Hall Fame. Fame. That's yeah, great. he tragically passed away a few years ago. All right, I think uh, we've covered that topic, and I think it's time for us to review our Juan Lopez. Yes. Again, the rating is one out of five cigars. I'll go first. I'm not really happy with mine because it is kind of exploded, kind of unraveled a little bit not burning evenly um, taste is yeah it's medium body but that's all I, have. I don't taste the the mocha and the nutmeg it's kind of bland for me so sorry Juan how do you like this the one? band uh nah oh, oh no. I keep telling Bands you ain't making me dance today she's, she's a tough grader she is. This is actually, the Juan Lopez is actually re, was reblended. It was an old Cuban yeah, brand. Yeah, old from, Cuban. I think the it started oldest. in like eight, 1876, this is I think. The, one of the oldest brands. Yeah. yeah. They just um, and Alta just recently reblended it. And mm. I abs I love the cigar uh, for a number of reasons. One is it, it tastes great. Um, I'm, the construction's good. I, I, for one, really don't care how, if it doesn't burn evenly or not. As long as it tastes good and has a good draw, it's Look fine with taste. me. But I, I love the flavors of this cigar. Um, it's a very affordable Cigar yes. in a very box, affordable. sixteen in a box, and the, I think the top price is six dollars a cigar. Yeah, they're very reasonable. And that's, that's for the, the big one. Yeah, not that's bad. for the big one. It is, a, it is a fantastic cigar, and it's we just got them. Paul, I didn't want to like this cigar, but I do. <laughs> um, to me, it is very classically Nicaraguan. Mm. Everything about the flavor is just—it's simple, it's earthy, it's got just enough complexity. It's got the hints of things, but it's basically got a, just a good, rich Nicaraguan tobacco flavor to it. Yeah. Um, when I first lit this cigar up, it, it tasted a little waxy uh, when I first drew in. Um, but as it gets, as it goes down, it, it mellows out. It's very good. I do get the nutmeg taste, a little hint of mm -hmm. cocoa. Is that in the middle? Um, I do it. Excuse me? Is that when you got to the middle? Yes. Once I get to the middle. Um, as I blow it through my nose, that's where I got that nutmeg mm. taste. So mm. that's where I get it. I didn't even get to smoke it all the way through. Uh, so I guess I missed all that. 
uh, my opinion before we go to our mystery reviewer is probably somewhere a little higher than T is and a little lower than Rob's. It's an okay cigar. I get the waxiness, mm -hmm. a little flaky ash for my taste, too much. Uh, I, the best thing I think it has going for it beside the band. <laughs> <laughs> I think the price is right. It's a decent everyday cigar. It's yeah. modestly priced. And, you know, it's a cigar. I don't... Uh, I don't get the earthiness. I heard some comments. I don't quite get that, but it's okay. I mean, it's, wow. at the price, it's a, it's, a, it's a good buy, in my opinion. Our mystery reviewer? Well, it's a nice, I, I taste the hint of the woodsiness and the earthiness. It's a good medium cigar. It's not overpowering. And it, it's just, I, I actually got a little pepper hint out of it, too. Oh. Interesting. So, it was very good. I enjoyed it. Okay. Well, I, I think it's uh, time to go to our numerical uh, rating. Yay. Three. Oh. Wow. wow. Yeah. We're going to differ on this one. I, I just give this a four and a half, and that's not even including the price. I really, really wow. like this cigar. And I will note that I like the Toro better than that. This is one of those cigars where I think the size is a, di uh, is a different flavor. Size yeah. matters. I like yeah. the Toro. I wasn't going to go there. Size does yeah. matter. Paul? I give it a 3.5. Um, I smoke yeah. this cigar playing golf all the time, so I, I give it a solid 4. I'm 3 and 7 eighths. <laughs> <laughs> 3.875. I'll split so the baby. Funny, okay. uh, Our mystery reviewer? Um, I've, I wavered a little bit, but I, I will agree with Rob. It's, it's a 4. With its price and its taste, it's a 4. Well, be, since Tia brought the overall yeah. flooring yeah. down, yeah. I, yeah. it only comes in at a, a 3.57. Oh, yeah. Which isn't bad. And considering uh, the price, that's a shame. it's actually pretty fair Much cigar. Much better cigar than that. Well, it, it looks like, sadly, we're coming to the end of our show. And I think uh, I think we should start telling people what we're going to do next week. Oh, so, good idea. Great. Scott, Tia, yeah. why don't so, you quickly uh, tell us? What are we going to review next week? We're going to review the Arturo Fuente Hemingway series, The Short Story. Okay. Oh, nice. And then next week, our topics, of course, we're going to have Paul in the factory. Oh, yes. Yep. We're going to talk about the dreaded tobacco beetle. Which oh, is, oh, you're going to want to know about that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you don't want to know. And we're going to talk about uh, famous cigar smokers. Okay, oh. and thank you. And I think it's time for us all to bid our fond adieus. Bye bye for now. Adios. I said it too. Oh. <laughs> Ciao for now, everybody. And thanks very much for viewing us again. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Max, what do you have for us this weekend? Well, this weekend we're going to be doing our pick your discount promotion. Well, we'll have the lovely Miss Tia pick out your discount. Wow, 40% off? 40%? That's right. We're going to have discounts available all the way up to 50% off. Make your purchase. You reach in, pull out your chip, and whatever it says, that's your discount. You can pick your own discount or have her pick the discount. Thank you.